you. What about Jackson Hole? What did you think of that speech by Bernanke? Were you listening in? Well, I wasn't listening in, but I was reading the analysis. Of course, it, yeah, it, it was sort of what you expected, but I think the main thing to do is to have a look at what happened in the markets after that speech. There was a brief sell-off, and then the market spiked back, spiked back up again. And more importantly, I would say that the dollar sell-off was quite important, suggesting that what people read in the, uh, in the speech was still, well, there is a Bernanke put, right, if things go wrong with the economy, although he stated that there's nothing really wrong with the economy, <laughs> so there's no recession. But if there were to be a, a recession, he would definitely put another round of stimulus into the economy. Yeah. They have tools. They still have tools, they say, to help prop up the economy. So with this extension of this uh, September monetary policy meeting, some are saying we're not going to get in Jackson Hole because there's too much hype and expectations, but maybe at this next uh, Fed FOMC meeting in next month. Well, he did extend it for two days, yeah. so I guess he has some convincing there to do because you, you've <laughs> seen over the past couple of months that he's got more and more dissenters within his team, so it's no longer that everybody uh, backs his policies anymore, right? And he's been known to be quite extreme in his policies to fight uh, deflation and to save the U.S. economy. And that goes to the detriment of the dollar, I'm afraid. Yeah, let me ask you about the market reaction. It, it did rally, didn't it? Uh, up 2.5% for the Nasdaq, so people were picking up tech stocks on Friday, 1.5% gains for the Dow and the S&P. But the dollar, as you mentioned, sold off. How do you uh, assess that, uh, the movement in the markets? What do, you, what do you think investors are thinking? Well, investors are thinking that there is still a Bernanke put. So what, what will happen, I hope, here in Asia is that uh, markets that have been very oversold on the idea that the global economy is sinking into another recession will catch some relief here. So the Taiwanese and Korean market in particular should do relatively well out of that. Yeah, cyclical markets like yeah. Korea and Taiwan. Yeah. And we did see that last week. I mean, we saw boost, uh, bump ups of 4% plus during some sessions uh, last week. Uh, th this is a good time to get in. These, these valuations are pretty cheap in your mind. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That's, yeah. Even China, you buy now at eight times earnings. I mean, I haven't seen it like that ever before. Mm -hmm. The worry, of course, in China is that, indeed, if there is going to be another round of stimulus coming out of the U.S., probably commodity prices will start to rise again, and that will stoke further inflation in China. And mm -hmm. that's, of course, the risk and why China doesn't like the Fed to go on another uh, buying of bond spree. Okay. So, so okay, give me the allocation, though. I mean, what's the percentage of your portfolio in Korea and Taiwan, and in what sectors? Yeah, so we're, we're quite overweight Korea, but in Taiwan, both. Um, that's a, a mixture, but mostly it's uh, in uh, Taiwan, it's the technology sector, uh -huh. which has been really, really oversold. Also, a margin compression continuing mm -hmm. because of the strength of the Taiwanese dollar. Uh, so it's, it's that kind of a sector that could do well uh, right. from here. And in Korea, well, there's a broader mix there, but there also you'll find that banks and telecom stocks, including them, the exporters, are very cheap. Here. Okay. Well, let's also talk about what's happening in Japan. Um, do you care about a new prime minister coming in? We've seen so many in just five years. Well, yeah, there is a reason to care. I mean, this Mayahara-san, he could make a difference because he's much more pro-growth than any of the others. And he's also willing to put up a fight. He's not just sitting there and continuing things as they were. But the problem that he has is that one of those power brokers does not back him, so he has to convince the guy there that they need to vote for him. He's got much more popular support because he's very convinced that he can get uh, Japan out of deflation. Mm -hmm. And if that were to happen, that could be a very, very positive uh, Do you sign think anyone who wins today, whoever wins, will move the markets at all? Yeah, Mehara could actually move the markets, I think. Yeah, anybody else wouldn't really.